Hi everybody, please subscribe uh, to this channel if you find my project interesting and we are starting a new adventure. Do you like books? Books uh, store knowledge from the beginning of time. Even with the advent of uh, internet in ancient books you can find information that is not presented uh, on the World Wide Web. Today we will visit Vatican Library and I will tell you why this library is so interesting to work in and about my experience of uh, visiting it. To receive a permission of work in the Vatican Library is not so difficult as it seems. First of all, uh, you need uh, a letter from your university that confirms necessity of your research and a passport to access the Vatican City. Do not confuse it uh, with access to the museum area. In the main entrance of Vatican City, you will see the Pontifical Swiss Guard, an armed force that uh, protects the Pope and the Apostolic Palace. Then you show your passport uh, in the police office, explain the purpose of your visit and receive temporary pass. With this pass, uh, you can go to the Secretariat of the Library, where, after presenting all documents, uh, receive pass to the library. The Vatican Apostolic Library formally established in 1475, but it's much older. It's one of the oldest libraries in the world, and it contains one of the most significant collections of historical texts. It has 75,000 codices from throughout history, around 1 million printed books, uh, which include around uh, 8,000 in Cunabula. The Vatican Library is a research library for history, law, philosophy, science, uh, theology, and also medicine. Pope Nicholas V decided to create public library for Rome. He wanted that uh, the Latin and Greek uh, manuscripts, which had uh, grown from 350 to around 1200 from the time of his accession, uh, should be made available for scholars to read and uh, study. His death prevented him from carrying out uh, this uh, plan, but his uh, successor, uh, Pope uh, Sixtus IV, realized this project and established uh, the Vatican Library. The rooms of the library were decorated by the best painters of that time. There were four rooms uh, called Biblioteca Latina for works in Latin, Biblioteca Greca for works in Greek, Biblioteca Secreta for manuscripts which were not directly available to readers, and Biblioteca Pontifica for the papal archives and registers. The collection continued to grow from a total of uh, 2,527 manuscripts in uh, 1475 to a total of uh, 3,498 in 1481. In the 16th century, under the Pope Leo X, uh, to the library were added manuscripts and printed books. And uh, later, the archive materials uh, began to be separated from the library, so they were created the Vatican secret archives. Pope Sixtus V uh, decided to construct a new building for the library. This project was realized uh, by the architect Domenico Fontana. This building is still belongs to the library. In the 17th century, to the library collection began to integrate private book collections. In the 18th century, uh, to the library were added sections dedicated to antiquarian and uh, artistic collections. In 1746 uh, was uh, purchased uh, Caponi Library, and in 1748 uh, was uh, purchased Ottoboni Library. In the 18th century appears a project uh, to publish a complete catalogue of uh, the manuscripts which uh, were preserved in the library, but uh, from uh, 22 folio volumes were published only three and a half. In 1809, uh, when Rome joined the French Empire, the Vatican Library became the national library and uh, was enriched with a collection of orders. Most of the captured manuscripts and artistic heritage were returned after the Congress of Vienna. 
In 1892 was opened the current uh, reading room for uh, printed books. During this period uh, was also created the card catalog of printed books. In uh, 1902 the Vatican Library purchased the Barberini Library that counted over 11,000 Latin Greek and Oriental manuscripts and over 36,000 printed books. It's just a short history and a small part of all the materials uh, that keeping in this library. For example, I was able to find the general regulation of the medical faculty of Milan University for 1775. It's a unique book that uh, makes it possible to understand how the medical faculty functioned in the 18th century. Our recipe textbook composed by famous Collegio of Doctors of uh, the Art and Medicine of Florence, published in uh, 1498. Textbook on venereal diseases in French language, uh, published in Lyon in 1693. And uh, many other interesting books that help us to understand the history. Footend video material from this video is a copyright of Vatican Library and I would like to thank the Vatican Library for the possibility to work with their books and manuscripts. And that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Subscribe to my channel and see you in the new interesting place.